I did start recording, but I didn't input these values into my calculator. So <laughs> here we go again, everyone together. <laughs> Let's put these in. So, all right, so we have a real question here before I put them in. Um, let's look at what stuff means and I want to think about which one would be dependent and which one would be independent because either they're going to tell me or I have to figure it out. So I have this is question four on the second assignment. What is the relationship between the amount of time uh, statistic students study per week and their final exam scores? So when they ask for the relationship between something and something else, that first something is typically your X and the second something is your Y. So that's another way of telling you what the independent variable is versus the dependent. But we know that the time studying should be the independent and the score should be the dependent because your score should depend on the amount of time that you spend preparing, preparing, preparing. I was going to say preparation and then I was going to say preparing and I mixed it up, preparing for your final exam. So notice they asked me for the correlation coefficient. They asked me for this. Now this test is determining if there is correlation or not, um, because obviously if there is no linear correlation, then all the crap that I come up with doesn't mean anything. And you want to, you want to, you know, you want to know what this means. So um, actually, let me move this out of my way. So. You guys, if you're running a test, and this is for this particular week, you don't have to figure out much of what would go there because you're always testing about row. You're always testing about row. Um, and where's my table? Because we're only talking about linear correlation and row is the population linear correlation coefficient. So we're only going to use this. You don't even have to figure out anything else. It's always going to be that for this particular drop down. OK, because these are drop downs, right? Um, now, if rho were equal to zero, it's the same idea as if R were zero because R is for the sample and rho is for the population. So if the population correlation coefficient is zero, right? If the coefficient is zero, then there is no linear correlation. So the null hypothesis is always for you guys talking about that there is no linear correlation for these. OK, I think most of these are two tailed, right? Yeah, two tailed, two tailed, two tailed, two tailed. Most of these here are two tailed. <clears throat> so. And then the alternative is that there is linear correlation. Now, this particular two tailed test, when you're doing two tailed for these, it's always whether there is or there is not linear correlation. That is all. We're not talking about whether it's positive or negative just for this test. We could talk about whether it's positive or negative based on the correlation coefficient, based on the slope, based on the equation. But for this particular test, it's not testing whether it's positive or negative. It's testing whether there is or there is not linear correlation. So if if the correlation coefficient is not zero, then there is linear correlation. If it is zero, then there is none. So your null hypothesis is always no linear correlation. So technically we would look to reject to the to reject the null hypothesis for these in order for anything that we do with them to make sense because if there is no linear correlation then it doesn't matter if we have an equation to represent it like why there's no correlation that that line is not really going to tell me anything because there's no linear correlation so i'm looking to reject the null for all the stuff that i do to make sense so every time you're rejecting the null then there is linear correlation for these te tests um, that's what it means. Now, to get all these values, to get my, my correlation coefficient, to, to run my test, to get my p-value, to get my equation, um, I got to put, obviously, this stuff in my calculator. And I always say, you know, you put your x in L1, your y in L2. I didn't do it yet, so we're going to do it together. You go to stat and you go to edit because you want to input stuff. And I'm going to get rid of this. Clear, enter, get rid of this stuff. Clear, enter. And my L1 is going to have my time that I'm using to prepare for my test, right? So 10, 5, 8, 13. See, look at that. I might type too fast. It doesn't go in. 12, 6, 7. And the um, 
I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven values. So I should have seven here. And now see, this is on the eighth one. So that's a quick little check that I didn't miss anything. So the first student who did uh, 10 hours of study got a 78. The second student who did five hours of study for the final got a 70. The third, 73. Fourth, 83. The fifth, 88. This is my sample. Six and 65. Okay, so I have my stuff. L1 is my X, L2 is my Y. That's important. I'm going to second and quit, second mode. And I'm going to graph this. You know, I'm, I'm going to, this time I'm going to probably copy and paste it on here. I didn't do that for the other ones, but. I want to see what the scatter plot looks like because I'm a visual person and I like to see it. So I'm going to show you how to graph it on the calculator. You could potentially do it by hand if you want to, but I'm going to do it on the calculator because I already put my values in and it'll do it for me. Not really necessary again, but if you want to see what the scatter plot looks like to make a, you know, a correlation to make um, to relate it to what you're finding then it's nice to see the scatter plot. So every time you're doing a statistical graph, you're always going into stat plot, which is above your y equals on the top left of your graphing calculator. And so second, and then click that to get it. You have uh, a few plots that you can have, but you only need one of them on. So I'm gonna go into number one, enter, because I'm gonna tell the calculator which type of statistical graph I want. And I want a scatter plot. And you see mine's already on, it's highlighted, it's already on, so I don't have to turn it on. You know, after statistics, if you're using your graphing calculator for other things, you might want to turn this off because you don't want to see these statistical graphs later. But right now, I want mine on. This is the graph that I want, scatter plot. If yours is not highlighted, you see, this is not highlighted. I get to go over to the scatter plot and press enter so that it's highlighted. And then my X list is in L1. I already put that in. My Y list is in L2. And then, you know, I can, let's say I want these dots. And it's a blue. That's fine. I don't have to change anything else. So this is kind of already done for me because I did these yesterday too. So everything is already in there. Now, this is not where I get the graph. This is just where I tell the calculator what graph I want. Where I get the graph is where graph. My button that says graph, which is top right. Now, a lot of times I have students click that and they go, I don't see anything. Well, it makes sense that I would not see anything because if my horizontal scale, my X axis does not have values that make sense with what's here, then it's not gonna show those points. Same thing with the Y axis. And so for me, I like to go to window to tell the calculator what, how, where I want it to focus. You know, what values of X, oops, what values of X and what values of Y. And you can see X min, X max. I mean, this is direct. X min is the minimum X value that you want on your graph. X max is the maximum X value that you want on your graph. So here, the minimum is five and the maximum is 10. So I, I like to go a little bit past what's in my data just because I don't want it actually like on the line. I want to be able to see it clearly. And then leave that as one, the X. This is just saying I'm counting by one unit. My Y min and my Y max. You see Y min and Y max goes from zero to 40, but all my scores are above 40. So I need my minimum Y to at least be like 65 or I'm gonna go 60. And then my Y max has to include at least 88. So I'm gonna go to 90. So I'm changing the window so that it represents the data that I have. Ooh interesting so this is the data <laughs> and i have one two three four five points am i missing somebody let me go back to my window and make sure 60 0 to 11. oh i'm sorry i'm missing some because my x max goes to 13 so i need to change that which makes sense that i'm not seeing all my dots so i'll make my x max 15 to include these guys now I'm seeing all my dots. So you see, like, I changed my window because um, obviously I wasn't including everyone in the last one. So you can see this is kind of linear. There's some random points that are kind of outlier-ish, 
<laughs> if you remember that term. Um, but it looks like I could represent it with a line and approximate stuff, predict stuff. I mean, I wouldn't call this strong. Could be, I mean, there are points here that are pretty much in the middle. I definitely want some more data, though, to determine the strength accurately. However, based on this, we'll see. We'll find the linear correlation coefficient. But this is looking positive, increasing. So I'm expecting a positive slope. And I'm expecting a positive linear correlation coefficient, right, um, being that it's increasing, which also means as X increases, Y increases, which means as the time that I study increases, my score should increase, which makes sense logically with what I would think for, you know, what do you call it? Studying for a final. So here, wait, let me put this here. So you guys will have it for your notes. So this is what it looks like. This is what my scatter plot looks like after I graphed it. Again, you don't need to have it, but I like to see it. Now, um, second mode, let's get out of that. Let's actually do the test. Let's find the values. So stat and scroll over to tests because I'm going to run a test. And this thing is going to give me everything I need. So I'm going to scroll down to lin reg t test because I'm doing a test for a linear regression and I'm running a test. Enter. My X list is L1. I already have that. My Y list is L2. Not much to change here. You don't have to change frequency. Um, and then you tell it what type of test it is. A lot of yours that you have to do for, for your second assignment is two tailed. So you probably are going to have not equal to zero a lot. Don't have to put anything here. And then I'm going to calculate. Here's my stuff. So then reg t test gives me all this good, all this good stuff. Oops. Gives me this, which is everything I need. This arrow implies there's more information, and it gives me my r and my r squared underneath there. So let me grab that. Okay, so it gives me everything. Then I just have to put everything in place where I'm asked, and then now we're going to talk about it, interpret it, and all that stuff. So, okay. Um, all right, so not everything you need here, but, right, um, you see it gives you your y equals a plus bx, where b is your slope here. So this is my slope, right? b is the slope coefficient in front of x. a is the y-intercept. So if I were to write the equation, which I think they asked me to do somewhere. Yeah. No, but just be careful too. They don't necessarily have it in slope intercept form because they have the y intercept first. So I'm going to write it like that over here. So y equals a, which is 54.6005. I'm just going to take a bunch of these for now, plus b, which is 2.3737x. We'll see if I need more digits. Typically, we use a lot of these digits because we're going to use this for predictions, but the rounding here was probably only two decimals. It's not very good, but anyway. Um, all right, my correlation coefficient, which is R. What else do I need? My p-value, right? This is my p-value, this guy. Test statistic, if I need it, we don't need it. You don't really need this test. It's for other stuff that you guys don't do, but this is your alternative, alternative hypothesis. Um, and that's like it, the R and the R squared. Everything is here. So find the correlation coefficient, round to two decimal places, 0 0.89. Now this is a strong positive linear correlation. This is very close to positive one. Now I expected this to be positive given that the scatter plot is increasing. This is pretty strong, which would make sense because these most of these points are close together. But if I were to add some values here, I would like to see how that would change or stay the same. We, I don't know. We're just measuring this one. Um, so this is expected. The p-value is 0. Round to 4, 0. 0.0075, which is small, which is expected because I am expecting to reject the null. The level of significance is this. State the conclusion. Um, so you know, my p-value, your p-value method is what you're using, and your p-value is less than alpha here, 
because 0 0.0075 is smaller than 0 0.05. And remember yesterday we said, you know, just go step by step. First, first number. If the second number is the same, go to the next one with this one. The second number to the right of the decimal here is smaller than this one. So this P value is smaller than alpha, which means you reject the null when you are doing your P value method, which is the only thing that you're doing for these. And when we reject the null, right? Like I'm, I'm across it out, I'll probably take that off after, but I'm saying that I'm supporting this, that there is linear correlation. So let's see which one matches that. So there is statistically insignificant evidence to conclude that there is a correlation. Now this says insignificant evidence, which is not, not going along with um, that there is a correlation. But so that's the opposite of what I just said. Um, there is statistically insignificant evidence to conclude, so this is insignificant, that a student who spends more time studying will score higher on the final exam than a student who's got, uh, remember, this test is only testing on whether or not there is um, correlation. So this is out. There is statistically significant evidence to conclude that there is, okay, so there is statistically significant to conclude that there is a correlation between the time spent studying and the score on the final exam. So this goes along with what we just said because I'm rejecting the null, so I'm supporting the alternative, which says that there is linear correlation just saying that there is doesn't matter if it's positive or negative this is just testing if it is or is not linear correlation so this one's looking good let's look at this one there is statistically significant evidence statistically significant evidence to conclude that a student who spends more time studying will score higher now this is not necessarily false however remember what i said the hypothesis test is not talking about you know whether or not the slope is positive or negative. It's not talking about the correlation being positive or negative. If I wanted to do that, I would do a right tailed test or a left tailed test. So I'm not testing that based on this. I could determine it's positive by looking at this graph. I could determine it's positive by looking at the correlation coefficient. I could determine it's positive because the positive slope, but this test is not determining that. This test is simply saying whether there is or there is not because we want the regression line to be useful. OK, so just be careful with that because, you know, whereas this last one is not necessarily wrong, the hypothesis test is not telling you that. Other things are telling you that. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I think the next thing they asked me for is this. So let me grab this and bring it back here. Um, your R and your R squared. And then actually, let me grab this because we're going to use this also. Okay, I don't need to rewrite it, it's already there. Okay, so this is based on the information that they gave us. So look, R squared, that's, R squared is given to me. I'll round to do decimal places, 0 0.7 through 0.79. Now I told you guys to, to look up some interpretations of R squared to get an idea of what it means, and you might need to read a couple just to get an idea. But you're going to find that there is a repetition involved with interpreting R squared, and it's typically not the smallest one here, and it's typically not this, this one. <laughs> um, this is not it. Given any group that spends a fixed amount of time studying per year, 79% of those students will receive the predicted... No, that does not sound right. Every time... Every time you talk about R squared, you're always talking about variation on average is being reduced by this amount as a percentage. R squared is a percentage. So there is a large variation in the final exam scores that students receive, which is true. But if you only look at students who spend a fixed amount of time studying per week, like R set, this variation on average is only reduced by 79%. This is also going to tell you how good um you know your your values are for your situation and and what this is saying is going along with kind of what i'm saying too like i might need some more data values to determine if there is in fact a a positive or negative linear correlation or linear correlation at all um but there's repetition with this now the equation is also given to me round your answer to two decimal places so this is my y-intercept 
because the slope is always in front of x. So it's kind of backwards from regular slope intercept form, but it doesn't matter. I can add in any order that I want. So rounding to two decimal places, 54.60 and 2.37. Now, this is surprising because typically we round these to a lot. I would take like five or six digits to the right of the decimal place for accurate prediction or more accurate prediction. Because if I round too much and then use this for prediction, it's like going to be off by a lot. But OK, I'm just answering these questions for now. Use your model to predict. Ah, now I'm predicting. So anytime I have to predict something, I always look at my equation. Predict the final exam score, y, for a student who spends 10 hours, remember that x is your hours, per week studying. So in other words, I'm going to call this, what am I at? g, when x is 10, find y. And really, you just plug it in. And I guess plug it into the rounded one, because that's how they wanted you to round. So plus 2.37 times 10. So this is easy because they gave you X. So you just have to plug that in directly to your calculator. Um, 54.6 plus 2.37 times 10. I like to put my parentheses around what I want first. 78.3. How am I rounding? Um, please round to the nearest whole number. So uh, we expect, or the closest, we expect a student who studies about 10 hours per week to get about a 78. Now this doesn't consider prep prior, this doesn't consider any knowledge um, prior. This, I mean, so this is why it's not completely, you know, I would, I would need a lot more data to really, but you, you know, obviously nobody cares, but just trying to answer the question. <laughs> Um, if I were using this, though, in real life, I would need a lot more information. But interpret the slope of the regression line. Ah, slope. Now, I'm going to go with, I could be detailed with this. Um, slope is 2.37. But just to make it easy for you, because you really just have to pick the correct answer, it's never going to be this one. <laughs> it's never going to be the slope has no practical meaning. <laughs> So process of elimination is this one, but obviously let's understand that for every additional hour per week students spend studying, they tend to score an average of 2.37 higher in the final exam. So where does that come from? Um, remember that your slope, I might take this over here just so I have some space, because your slope is change in y over change in uh, x, right? So change in y over change in x. And your y represents your score. So your slope here is 2.37, which technically is over 1, which means it's positive on top, positive on the bottom. So I would increase an average by 2.37, average score on the final, for every increase of 1. And x represents hours, one hour spent studying which exactly matches this. For every additional hour studying, oops, you tend to score an average of uh, 2.37 more points on the final for this particular exam. Okay. Um, your y-intercept, remember I told you that it's always an x-coordinate of 0 and a y-coordinate of this is 54.6. It's always it's always the one that's not attached to x in your y-intercept. It's like an initial condition, right? Um, now here, we'll look at this again. Um, the y-intercept has no practical meaning. That's never going to be your answer. Um, the average final exam score is predicted to be 55. Nope, that doesn't make sense. Um, and then between these two, the best prediction for a student who doesn't study at all is that the student will score 55 versus if a student does not study at all, then that student will score 55. There's a similarity between the two, but the difference between the two is that this one, part C or whatever, if a student does not study at all, then the student will score 55 approximately. That is very definite. And 
remember that there's obviously kind of error in this. And whenever we're using these equations, it's always a prediction. It's never exactly because, you know, it's an approximation of the situation, right? If I have a line that goes through here, it's not exactly going to represent all the data values, but I could use it to predict. So you're always going to go with the best prediction. Um, now, you know, remember that X represents hours, so zero hour studying. Zero hour studying would give you a score of 55 if I round to the nearest, right? So that's where that comes from. But honestly, with these like interpretations, like cross of elimination, you guys can get through that pretty easily because it's going to be pretty repetitive. And I mean, with this one, it sounds the same every time. With this one, honestly, like you eliminate two of them every time. <laughs> because the slope does have practical meaning and it's not as simple as, as X goes up, Y goes up. And then this one, you, basically you're always talking about a prediction, so you can jump to, to that one, so. But I mean, I hope it makes sense, you know, past what, uh, just simply doing the problem, with, you know. So here, let me stop recording.